AK Peter Freak Out Turn bring you guys our episode of the Mother Review Show where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. Now, on today's episode, we're gonna take a look at a film that I figured why not talk about it. I know last time, I mentioned this last time, um, I promised you guys a review of Son of the Mask. Oh, and believe me, that's coming. I'm going to rip that movie to shreds. But I wanted to do this one because tonight me and my brother are going to be seeing House of Wax. And I figured, you know what, since I reviewed the past three films from this company, I never got a chance to see this one. And I showed this one in a DVD update already. I figured why not give this one a watch while there's still some time. Because this particular movie is coming from the same company that's doing these particular films. Uh, the film, the House of Wax film. Um, and I've actually reviewed the other three films from this company. I reviewed the first two in preparation for the third film that I saw around Halloween that time. And I'm talking about Dark Castle Entertainment. For those who don't know, Dark Castle Entertainment was a production company that was founded in 1999 by Joel Silver, Robert Zemeckis, and Gilbert Adler. And just a quick recap on the films. In 1999, they made their first feature, House on Haunted Hill, which was a remake of a 1959 Vincent Price film, which I haven't seen. But I will say, I love this movie. If you guys, I'm going to be really quick with my reviews on these because I already reviewed them, but... If you want to see my th full thoughts, go into my channel and read the reviews. But really quick, uh, as I said, I love this movie. I think William Malone did a fantastic job directing this film. Much better than Fear.com, that's for sure. I love the look of the house itself. It's better than The Haunting, which came out the same time. Um, the creepy atmosphere, like the basement, the glass over the dining table. I like the cast of Jeffrey Rush. Tomka Johnson, Ally Larder, um, Chris Kattan, who to me steals the show in this movie, and is one of the best parts, some great gore and special effects, all of which were done by K&B, um, even the CGI I think looks great, so I think this is also one of the better remakes, it's definitely a great film, and it was a big hit, grossing over 40 million dollars, it became the first horror film to top the Halloween box office until The Grudge. So, yeah, I love House on Haunted Hill, and as much as I love it, it's not my favorite Dark Castle film at the moment. That would be, oh, you'll hear my thoughts on that, but this would be my second favorite. Then, in 2001, they did another remake of a Vincent Price movie, 13 Ghosts, which was directed by Steve Beck, who would go on to direct the next Dark Castle film after this. And I'm sort of off and on on 13 Goes. Um, I actually I actually like the film, but it has some problems. I'm going to say that right now. It has some problems because I thought the idea was ingenious. It really starts out promising with that opening scene in the junkyard. And I like the cast. I like Tony Shalhoub. I think he does a fantastic job as the lead. Uh, Matthew Lillard steals the show as Dennis. Um, the look of the house was fascinating with all the glass around it. The effects all around from the makeup on the ghost, which were done by K&B once again, look amazing. The CGI on that device thing looks very good. Sorry if you guys hear my dogs in the background. It's just the problem I had. Some of the side characters like Rod Digga and that little kid were annoying. Today I death of America. That stupid kid, I want to kick his butt through a field goal. They were annoying, or there's others that did nothing, like Shannon Elizabeth, who's just there to look good, um, or Aunt Beth Davids, who has this stupid twist at the end that feels thrown in at the last minute, and the fact that they kill off Matthew Lillard towards the end really hurt the film. It's not a bad film, it just could have been a better movie. But nevertheless, it, grow over, it grossed over $68 million, outgrossing House on Haunted Hill. Again, I like the film, it just could have been a little bit better. Then, come 2002... We get Ghost Ship. Yeah, I love that cover there. I know. I know some people hate that cover. I love that cover. I love a poster for this. But I'm going to say this right now. And I already said this in my review when I was in my old house. So if you want a deeper analysis, check out the review. But I love this movie. I love this movie. This has become one of my all-time favorite horror films. 
And I never understand why this movie gets so much shit from people. If you don't like the film, that's fine. I know around the time I did this review, a friend of mine named Kyle um, didn't like the film because he reviewed it around the same time I did. And he has a right to his opinion. I just don't get it. I love the story of this ocean liner that collects souls of people who have sinned. Of these movies, uh, so far, I think this has the best production design um, with this rustic, run-down ship. I also think Steve Beck does a better job directing the film than I think he did with uh, 13 Ghosts. It's shot better, like the angle, with the angles, like when Epps finds uh, Greer's body and the camera looks as though it's upside down as, it's, as, it, it's, as he's holding the picture of his wife and it reveals him in pails. I think this has the best cast, like Gabriel Byrd, Juliana Margulies, Ron Eldard, uh, Isaiah Washington, Carl Urban, um, Desmond Harrington. They all do great jobs. And I think they're given a lot more to do than I think people like to let on. And great special effects. Even the CGI looks pretty good, and it's limited throughout the mo whole movie. It's not that bad for CGI, and it's, it looks very good. It definitely looks very good. And I love the kills for th in this movie. I just don't think that this one deserves the hate that it gets. And at least those who don't like the film, they'll at least praise the opening scene and say the movie doesn't reach that level as it goes from there. I disagree. I think it keeps a steady pace from there. And to me personally, what people feel about this movie is what I feel about 13 Ghosts. I like the film, but I, it never goes beyond that opening scene to me. That opening scene at 13 Ghosts is the best part. This just has a lot more going to for it for me. And no, the soundtrack did not feel out of place. I'm a guy who loves heavy metal and hard rock, so this did disappoint. It only opened at number three because it came out the same weekend as Jackass the movie, which I reviewed around the same time. It only made $68.3 million on a budget of $38 million, which is a hit. A lot of people love to make it seem like it's a flop, but no, that's a hit. I guess maybe they were expecting it to be Game Busters, like how 13 Ghosts was a much bigger hit than House on Haunted Hill. So I think they were hoping it would be a bigger hit than what it was. But it seems to be growing a call following with the video release. But I, I urge you guys, if you have not seen Ghost Ship, definitely give it a watch. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I think you'll like it. But now we come to this film, and this is what Dark Castle decided now was the time to step into a more serious zone while staying true to the roots of that their past movies did so well with. And what film is that, you may be asking? What film does Dark Castle have in their rustic lair today? That film is none other than Gothica. Now, Gothica, this was a film made back in 2003, it was directed by a guy named... Matteo Kazovitz, who I don't know anything about, but what I do know is that this guy is a French director and actor. He's directed such films as The Crimson Rivers. Uh, he directed a short called Assassins, um, a bunch of other French stuff. Uh, for those who don't know The Crimson Rivers, that's a movie with John Renault. This guy seems to be more of an actor, though, because he was in such films as The Fifth Element, Jacob the Liar, and Birthday Girl with the Cole Kibbe, which I'd never heard of. But this movie came about after the release of Ghost Ship. Joel Silver was found by a writer named Sebastian Gutzeres, um, butch probably butchering his last name, who wrote the script for the film and went to his office to explain what it was about. Silver was so captivated by the idea, the story, of the fact that it tapped into a fear that we all have, and that was doing something terrible and having no memory of doing it. And so he put it into motion after getting the finished screenplay, and they chose the director, got their cast together, got to work filming. The movie started production in March of 2003, and... Filming began in April that year. For the setting of the asylum, the team brought in Graham Grace Walker to help with the production. Graham has been involved in such films such as The Island of Dr. Moria, Dead Calm, Crocodile Dundee, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and even has collaborated with Dark Castle on their previous film, film Ghost Ship. Ship. And, that, and he helped design the Woodward Penitentiary, and which... What it's known as in the film uh, was supposed to be built on a soundstage, but they augmented the design after the 
after Mathieu found himself liking the area SVP more, this meant that they had the ability to expand upon the original script and make a larger scope than where it originally was. So they still constructed a few areas at the sound stage. This brought some trouble because they wanted to maintain a, co a consistent look on the set in both areas, so they concluded so they included a particular color palette to the areas. After shooting finished up, the movie was ready to be released. The movie was made on a budget of $40 million and opened on November 21st. It opened to number two at the box office, grossing over $19 million behind Cat in the Hat of all movies. And the next weekend, it dropped to the number four spot. Despite that, the movie finished its run with $59 million domestically. Stickly and worldwide made uh, 40, 141 million has become Dark Castle's highest grossing film, uh, beating out 13 Ghosts. So it was a big hit for Dark Castle. Despite the box office results, the movie has received negative reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, is a 14% on the critical rating. Particular critics such as Wesley Morris criticized the film for its cheap thrills, or Eric Harrison of the Houston Chronicle um, said the who so said the later half of the film steps into supernatural territory. It starts to become silly because he actually liked the first half. Um, but surprisingly, the film did receive positive reviews. Roger Ebert, in particular, gave the film a positive review. That he's trashed the previous dark... Well, I would say he trashed this one. He just felt like it wasn't anything spectacular. Um, he gave this film three out of four stars, though, saying... In trash as in art, there is no accounting for taste. In reader, I cherish this movie in all of its lurid gore glory. Or Stacy Lyon Wilson of Horror.com said, Whether you're willing to pay full price to see style or over substance is up to you. But if you go in knowing when you're not seeing the next classic, you might have a little fun. The audience rating seemed to be nicer. It's a 45% on Ron Tomatoes, and on IMDb is a 5.8, which is higher than both than both Ghost Ship and 13 Ghosts. Now this one, I wasn't sure if I was gonna watch it, but I, as I said, I figured with House of Wax, why not see it? Um, I actually picked it up. I showed it a DVD update, two discs, as I showed earlier. Um, I was actually going to see this um, a couple years ago, but that was around the time I was in my new house, so I had a lot going on. Um, so I figured why not check it out. And after watching it, I liked the film, but this is definitely not my favorite Dark Castle film. That still goes to Ghost Ship, but I still enjoyed the film. I'd probably say it's number three of my favorites, and I understood what they were trying to do with this film in the first place. But part of the reason why I love Ghost Ship so much is just, it's unfair, on second thought, it's unfair to compare this to Ghost Ship, but I don't know what it is. It, I can compare because it it's by the same company, and I think what worked in that film is a present here. Um, it's just that film felt more fun, and I felt the atmosphere was a little bit more creepier than this film. It definitely more gory, but this has its violence too, which I'll get to. But I still like this movie. It's still creepy. Uh, it's definitely a lot creepier than 13 Ghosts, I'll say that. Um, but I'd probably say it's number three. I'll get into why later. But with the cast of this film, you got uh, Halle Berry as your main character, playing Miranda Gray, who was from Swordfish, The Last Boy Scout, uh, Monster Ball, the Flintstones movie, and <coughs> Catwoman. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. from A Natural Born Killer. He's going to be in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He was also in Hail Caesar. Um, you have Penelope Cruz from Blow, Vanilla Sky, and Sahara. Uh, Charles S. Dunn is in here in a small role, which actually kind of surprised me. I'm like, oh my god, that's Charles S. Dunn. For those who don't know, he was in Alien 3. Um, even those who don't like Alien 3 say he's the best part of that movie. Uh, Mimic, A Low Down Dirty Shame, um... You also have John Carroll Lynch from Fargo and Face Off. Uh, Bernard Hill from Titanic, the Lord of the Rings sequel. He's also in The Ghost in the Darkness. Uh, Dorian Harewood also has a quick role in here from A Sudden Death, Assault on Precinct 13, and Full Metal Jacket. This is definitely a huge list of cast of this movie. How do they all do? Well, you have to wait till the end to hear how they did.
But anyway, getting into the plot of the film is we meet this girl named Miranda Gray, played by Holly Berry, who's a psychiatrist at this mental institution that her husband Doug, played by Charles S. Dutton, also works in. And she's kind of one-sided on everything while working there. She automatically thinks a patient is crazy and doesn't take their t take the time to hear their story. She just judges them on how they act. And one night, while she's heading home in the rain, she's forced to take a detour. And while she's driving home, this girl in the middle of the road pops out of nowhere, and she swerves into a ditch, and upon getting out of the car to investigate who this girl is, he tries to comfort her, and she's all... The girl is all battered and beaten up. And she tries to comfort her, but she gets... But she blacks out. When she wakes up, she finds herself in the same mental institution that she works in. Only this time, she's a patient there. And she's confronted by her colleague, uh, lead, but now doctor, played by named Pete, played by Robert Downey Jr., who explains to her that her husband is dead and that she's that he that she's the one who killed her him. But she doesn't remember doing it. She finds out that she's in the same asylum as one of her patients, Chloe, played by Penelope Cruz, who er. Uh, who were Albert sh Bird she shows during uh, the meetings with Miranda might be the clues to why she's there. Um, but before she could start putting the pieces together, she tries to explain that she didn't do it, but particular clues point to her as the killer. Like this one point in particular, like there's these words carved on her that were also found at the seed. Um, so they think she's the killer. Um, but as she starts to spend more time in the asylum, she starts to find herself haunted by this girl who may reveal some things about why she is there. Will Miranda get to the bottom of why she's there or the real killer get away scot-free? Now, as I said, I do feel this film is a step down from Ghost Ship, which I felt like that film was a step up from 13 Ghosts. But I still enjoyed the film and I still found the creepiness that they got from the audience that they wanted to get from the audience making this film. And I think it came together pretty well. It's just the thing, the problem that I have with this film, and I'm going to say right here, I'm not a fan of just, I don't know why. I'm not a fan of this whole, like, it's hard to describe it. It's, I don't know how to get around to it. Right. I'll say right here, I'm not a fan of the depressing tone that the film uses at some times, because later on, like, because later on tries to do this campy sort of supernatural style, whereas with Ghost Ship, what I liked about that film is that it just felt more fun. I'm gonna say right here, the Ghost Ship to me just felt like a fun slasher film, and it knew that straight out, but it still managed to squeeze in some creepy parts, and it worked out pretty well with itself. No, like there's stuff that there's stuff in this film that I, that kind of creeped me out with some parts, and stuck in my head for a while. I even said that one scene with Gabriel Bird of the tank, but this like the like it's scary in one scene, and then it just goes completely unbalanced. Like the tone does not know what it wants to be. That's, to me, the biggest problem with this movie. It can't decide if it wants to be scary or be a super dat or be, like, Dark Castle's other stuff, which is what they were going for. It's just... And I praise the film that it is creepy. Believe me, it is creepy. It's just towards the end. And believe me, I like the supernatural angle. It's just some stuff you didn't need. Like, like the twist of, like... Her, her husband, which m makes his whole death less impactful and makes him glad that he died. I mean, granted, it's a good twist, but it's sort of like, did we really need to do with that character? It just, it did feel needed. But I'll get all that later. But I thought the story was really creepy. I do admit, going into the pros, I liked the story. I thought it was creepy. I think this, that this is a creepy idea. And I don't think it was as badly written as critics made it out to be. And I feel like the supernatural angle works because unlike Toolbox Murders in that film, film, I do feel for what the supernatural angle has to do, 
uh, at the beginning and when it goes towards the end and for what it has to do it uh, it does what it can and for what it does it's clear that's what they were going for it handles itself well it stands on its own two feet it, it does it well for what it has to do to do in particular seeds and I think the team understood that. I don't want to seem like, oh, it was all bad. Because there's some points about the supernatural parts I like. I don't want to seem like it was all bad. It's just there were some instances that I felt you didn't need. Though. Need, like, the twist and whatnot and, like, how that ties into the twist. That, thinking about it now, I wasn't as me to it as I was when I originally started it. But thinking about it now, I'm sort of like, yeah, that, I, that could, doesn't need it. But... Yeah, in fact, if you want to see a twist done right, go watch Saw. That's a good-ass twist. But I still thought it handled itself well with the Supernatural Angle for what it had to do. And I thought the mood around the story was fantastic. It definitely offered a great atmosphere. Speaking of atmosphere, as I mentioned earlier, the production design was actually done by Graham Grace Walker, the same guy who worked on the production design for Ghost Ship. It's nice to see his touch hasn't gone away, because the production design is top-notch. The look of the sanitarium looks amazing, with the moody kind of color of the environment, which kind of makes this depressing look of the sanitarium with the particular areas. And it's a really creepy area. Yeah. Like the shower section with all those girls who have to shower together. I don't know if it's like that in jail, where women have to shower together... I don't know if that's how it is in jail, like, if, because if it is, thank God I'm not a woman. I know it's wrong to say, but thank God, um, but, yeah, um, but I think that area looks good. I like the part, I like the shots of, like, um, like the guard post and the particular areas of, like, the cells. And combined with Matthew's direction, I think he does a great job shooting the film. Granted, I'll take Steve Beck's directing and ghost ship over this because I feel like he shot it with a bit more uniqueness in this movie. He, like, as I mentioned earlier, the shot with Greer getting impaled at the elevator and the camera shows him carrying the picture of his wife. And it looks as though he's upside down. That sticks with me. And none of there's no shots like that you'll find in this movie. But... For the most part, it shot well, and I think it looks really good. I'll say that. So it shot well. It looks good. Um, like, the action scenes for what there is is well done. And it's a, it's a well-shot film. I think Matthew does a great job. But moving away from that, the acting of the film is also top-notch. Halle Berry does, is a great actress. It does a really good job as our main lead. Unless you want to count Catwoman, where she was a horrible lead. She's definitely much better at this than Catwoman. At the beginning, she's this quick-to-judge psychiatrist who's pretty much quick to judge the patients based on the fact uh, that they will listen if they will listen to her or not. Um, but then when she finds herself in this situation where she ends up being in there for a particular situation she never was a part of and a thing she never did, she really starts to get karma for the fact for the fact that she was like that towards the other people because some of the doctors are acting like that towards her but her so and so so it's so um it's very like it's pretty much like um oh, what's the word it's pretty much like the punishment fits the crime that's what i gotta say it's pretty much like the punishment fits the crime and I think the film does a great job making her feel for her. And I, because towards the end, you see her screaming and like, I never did it and whatnot. And you feel sorry for her. Like, she's shocked that she's even in there. She's shocked that her husband's gone. Oh, and it really makes this innocent side to her stand out. So I think Halle Berry does a great job. She does a great job giving this innocent side to her, this hopeless side, this scared side to her that I think is done really well. And I think she does a good job here. So. Who's Ali Berry? Robert Downey Jr. was actually kind of surprised they got him because he's a great actor. And he has a, also does a good job in this film, portraying this doctor who you find out used to be a friend of hers. And at first, he's unsure of whether he should trust her or not. And he's kind of like, um, he's kind of like, you're crazy. But he's mostly leaning towards crazy. And even towards the end, like, 
when she uh, when shit hits the fan and he's she's calling him and telling him like I know what's going on it's this what's going on and he's like oh my god whenever you're acting normal you have to bring in the supernatural into this do this uh, but. I think he does a good job. I think he does a good job. Um, he's not a douche. He's not a dick. He's actually, he's a reasonable guy who's trying to stay in reality. Because trust me, he doesn't know what the audience knows. He, um, he's just pretty much like, like I'm sane. I'm irrational. Like you think of that scene from Child's Play with Doc, with uh, Detective Mike Doris. Because I'm sane, Miss Barkley. Sane and irrational. That's pretty much him. But I think he does a good job in this film. It's nice to see Robert Downey Jr. in a horror movie, too. So, yeah. Uh, I think he does a good job. I think him and Halle Berry have good presence together on screen. Overall, it makes for a good performance. Charles is done for the little scenes that he has. He does fine. Um, I don't like where they go with the character, though. Because um, he's a good actor. I like him in other films. But he does fire for what he has to do. You see him as this nice guy at first, but when you see what he does at the end, like, really makes you hate him. He's a despicable character. Um, John Carroll Lynch does a good job, too, as the sheriff, who also kind of ties into the plot towards the end. Um, um, he does fine. Uh, Bernard Hill, who I, who's actually the guy who runs the sanitarium. I'll get some dust off that. Sorry about that. Um, but he runs the sanitarium, and he... And you find out his daughter committed suicide, and spoiler, when I put this down, well, your volume back up, because this is a spoiler, that his daughter might be the one haunting her, and he's, even, he's like, that's crazy, even though, even though later on you learn that he has, like, you, back up. You learn that he has a particular dream where that she saw when she uh, saw her on the bridge, and pretty much, and pretty much like he, you get the idea that maybe he witnessed her doing this. So yeah, but he does fine. Uh, John uh, Penelope Cruz plays this one weird character in this film. Uh, he she does five what she has to do. Uh, so the kid, nobody in the cast do a bad job. Um, they're definitely not up to par with Ghost Ship's cast, um, and and definitely don't have like the character that they have in Ghost Ship. I mean, they're not Ghost Ship. Just want to make it clear, they're not characters like you think of every day, and they're definitely not. They're just stereotypical character. But I'm fine with that. I was fine with that. Here though, though they're definitely more down to earth and they're definitely more memorable but I don't know I just felt the characters more in that film so yeah but yeah besides that the special effects of this movie are well done this movie is I don't want to say incredibly violent it's not incredibly gory but it's definitely bloody in some parts uh, the one scene where she's murdering uh, this one guy I won't say who and she it's something, she writes something on the wall. It's definitely a bloody scene. There's some good... Uh, it's not incredibly gory, so I should say gory, but it's definitely very disturbing. There is some weird stuff. And I was starting a little bit early because this is definitely a tough film to talk about. It's definitely a film where you really have to sit down and watch it and really understand what is going on. But... I think they handle themselves well with the effects. Yes, there's some CGI in there with the fire, uh, with the fiery head and whatnot, but that's minimized too much like Ghost Ship. But I hate to compare this to Ghost Ship, but they're by the same company, so I think it could be a pass. But but Gothica, I think this is a well done film, especially and it ends with an Olympuskid rendition of Behind Blue Eyes. I like this rendition. I like how it ends. Uh, no one knows what it's like to be the bad man behind blue eyes. I like the song. And it's definitely a really creepy film. It's just, it gets bogged down because towards the end, the tone, while it's well done, there's some, it, there's some stuff you didn't need that really t take the scares away. Like her finding out the secret about her husband that really kind of... Granted, it's shocking, but I think it kind of ruins the character a little bit. And I think it really wasn't needed. Like, like, why not make her, like, make... 
her the reason why she's being possessed and she took her husband away. Why do we have to make the, the husband such a dick towards the end? I didn't think that was needed. But I think it's... I still think, think they handled the supernatural elements, well, just particular elements that were needed. Um, I also kind of was an... I also felt the movie kind of overused the jump scares a little bit too much. Like, like some points, like this one point in the sanitarium where she's walking by and it's just like, boom! Like, she, they're walking by and it's like, like that. Granted, Ghost Ship kind of has jump scares, but I just felt the atmosphere was a little bit more creepier and the, and there was more to it that sort of creeped me out. Like the pool sea filling up or that painting on the wall. I'm bringing up Ghost Ship a lot because they're both ghost movies. They're both by Dark Castle. One did it better. But overall, it's not bad. It's not a bad film. Gothica is definitely a unique movie. It's definitely one that... It's the most challenging of all the Dark Castle films. It's So far, this is definitely the one that is the most challenging. Not challenged in the sense that it's hard to sit through, but it's definitely the most thought-provoking of all their movies. And it's definitely a creepy time that um, that um, I think any horror fan of Dark Castle will enjoy. So, while not their best film, I still think it's a really good horror film and definitely a creepy ghost story. So I recommend Gothica. If you find it for a cheap price, I think I definitely pick it up. Definitely, this two disc edition is definitely a good way to go too. So when it comes down to it, I give Gothica an eight out of ten. It, it deserves it. Definitely deserves to be watched. Watched. If you liked it, if you like it more than Ghost Ship, that's fine with me. I just like Ghost Ship a little bit more because I thought it was a little bit more fun. But still, th I thought this was a really creepy film. Definitely a good movie. So, Gothica, really enjoyed. But that's my review for Gothica. Next time, I'm going to do a rant on Son of the Mask. That movie's going down. You'll see my thoughts on it next time. But all things aside... Be on the lookout for that, and I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Gothica. What is your favorite Dark Castle film? Film of these movies so far, even House of Wax, which I plan to see soon. Of these movies, which is your favorite? Here's the order for me so far at the moment. Number one is number one is Ghost Ship. Number two is House on Haunted Hill. And number three is Gothica. Those are my three favorites. Top three favorite Dark Castle movies. Those are my favorites. What are your top three favorites? Um, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time in the wonderful world of YouTube. Bye.